stress testing weapons in Helldivers 2 is surely an easy and painless process, right? Well, not quite. Today, I'm taking you on a disastrous journey into the realm of stress testing the CB9 explosive crossbow from the Democratic Detonation Warbond. And if you're thinking, ah, Face Shifter doesn't even do weapon test videos. He can't even use Microsoft Excel, let alone crunch numbers. Well, you'd be absolutely right. And I did tell you that it was disastrous. And believe me, when I say disastrous, I mean disastrous. With some near catastrophic failures you'll witness later in this video. My trusty crossbow was immediately called into action with a well-placed shot preventing a commissar from calling in a dropship. Immediately after, I found my first test subject, a heavy devastator. Five shots, so a full clip in terms of a crossbow, and this was down. A promising start to my data gathering as a group of striders appeared on the horizon along with a dropship. To my surprise, the striders and the trash mobs were absolutely obliterated with one shot. This crossbow was making a better first impression than someone meeting their partner's parents for the first time on some idle Sunday. This pristine start continued as I pushed the automaton fortification, lobbing explosive bolts like artillery making short work of any resistance. It's got some heavy bullet drop but it's very satisfying to play. However, this was where I was about to get a severe reality check. Wow. My feelings about this weapon very quickly changed from warm, fuzzy adoration to a slow, creeping frustration as I realized that once you start firing at targets in the air, you can't hit sh with this thing. My ego was starting to take a kicking, a severe kicking. This easy, difficulty five mission was quickly turning into a nightmare as the swarm of gunships and striders grew and the hail of rockets and lasers intensified. So too did my frustration. Oh my God. Oil swilling automatons were in full control. This is an absolute disaster. And I made my final stand in the same Holy wretched place with the same outcome. My heart sank. I had been humiliated. Humiliated by a gaggle of shiny tin can wannabe terminators with tacky red neon lights, the kind you'd find on some boy racer's Vauxhall Nova. How the hell was I going to make a video showcasing the merits and pitfalls of this explosive medieval weapon when I couldn't even clear a tier 5 mission? Fortunately, for all my shortcomings, I make up the difference with persistence, passion, desire, and a heart full of nothing but democracy. All the galaxy will take you for salvation. Let nothing stand in the way of liberty. Objective critical strategy available. Made it. And poetically, I destroyed one of those floating, oil swilling wannabe terminators with red tacky neon lights to close it off. Life was good. But despite my ego being sort of intact, it was only T5, but that's not the point, all right? I still had work to do. Present to the masses my findings. Was it going to be delivered with the silky Aussie tones and cadence of Herm's plays? <laughs> Probably not. Was it going to possess the statistical depth and genius of Reich 15? Not 
a chance. Go and check out both their channels, by the way, folks. They make some fantastic cool. Helldivers content. But that aside, that didn't matter to me. I was invested in this mission now, and despite my lack of confidence in the presentation of my research, I soldiered on and reflected on my findings about the crossbow's overall performance and how it measured up against each automaton unit. The weapon itself has a solid range, healthy ammo reserves, and overall excellent damage against most units and excellent AoE. I stress most units because, as you're about to find out, it's pretty useless against some of them. It's got a hellish bullet drop, but I actually find this to be quite a fun aspect of this weapon. It feels like you can pull off some of those really excellent trick shots if you play around with it, and all data aside for a moment, whilst it's definitely not an optimal weapon, I think it's an incredibly fun one to use. Back to the AoE potential, this weapon can clear small groups of lesser enemies with ease, and you can fire it against walls, objects, and the ground, and still rack up decent kills. Now, how did it actually perform against those filthy oil swilling bots? Well, let's start with the good before we move on to the bad and the very ugly. Troopers and commissars are an absolute walkover with this thing. Not that that's much of an achievement, but this is more so than other weapons, just because of how insane the AOE is. If you have a large group of these together, you can make very short work of them, folks. The exact same can be said about Scout Striders. If you hit any of its weak points, it's an instant kill. And even when you hit the front panel, it is most of the time an instant kill as well. I have seen instances, mind, where this is not the case, but that is few and far between. I think this may have something to do with where the AOE effect is positioned from the bot operating the contraption. If you come across a group of these with the troopers and commissars mixed in, you're in a very strong position. It feels a bit like a mini grenade launcher of sorts, and that is no bad thing at all here. Berserkers, on the other hand, are where this weapon starts to lack a little and where we will begin to look at the bad of this weapon. If you can hit the weak spots on a berserker consistently, three shots will take one down. But if you're like me and have far from exceptional aim, you're looking at four shots that directly connect. With a clip of five shots in this weapon, this leaves very little room for error and you can often find yourself being chased down by these savages. This is, of course, reflecting upon the weapon being used in isolation. If you were to switch to a decent sidearm like the Uzi, you would clean things up much more quickly. Devastators are a similar story here. If you can land clean direct hits, you can take them down in four shots. But as you will already know, standing and trading with a Devastator with a fairly slow firing weapon is a recipe for disaster. And I would say that this only gets exacerbated by heavy Devastators with the shield. You can take them out in four shots too, but you have the added challenge of shooting past the shield, so not ideal here, folks. Hulks are also an absolute nightmare to deal with when using this weapon. Obviously, you wouldn't rely on it in real circumstances, but with the shots being completely ineffective against their front armor, you must hit the back panel, and even if you're able to get some clear shots on this, you're looking at many, many shots. I think around six to eight was my experience, and this, of course, requires positioning and use of stun grenades, so not really advisable. Now, the ugly. I was shocked, absolutely shocked, to find this weapon is ineffective against cannon towers and, and fabricators. I'm particularly disappointed about the latter here, and I'm afraid that things don't get any better on the terminated side of things, as we're about to find out. Tanks are also the same story. I spent a good portion of time dancing around one, put some 20 shots into its rear weak spot, and got zero payback out of it, apart from a cannon to the face. Gunships are also a total waste of time to fire at with the crossbow. And as you saw previously, there is just so many better ways to deal with them. If you're equipped with this, do yourself a favor, folks. Unless you're an insane shot, use something else. I'm actually going to put my hands up and be honest here. I didn't land a single shot against a gunship, so I can't tell you how many they take. I'd imagine it probably only takes one. Maybe someone can sound off in the comments below and let us know. With the automatons covered, I now had one final mission on my hand. I headed to the other war front, you know, where that much less existentially threatening presence are. That mere afterthought. Initiating FTL job two. The I dropped in, even more hopeful than I was previously. Surely my experience in the face of the oil-swilling scumbags would mean I'd have a much easier time against these pathetic tier 5 terminant pests. 
I was given my answer as soon as I touched down and came across a group of nursing spewers. I felt stupid not considering the explosive nature of the crossbow and how it would not be well suited against an enemy that favors trying to overwhelm you and chew your face off, melting you into a pulp with acid. But this was the position I found myself in and like any liberty and democracy spreading hell diver does, I persevered. Pushing my way through the initial wave and getting myself on a level footing, I decided to focus keenly on mission objectives and record my findings as I progressed. Little did I know I was about to encounter something that would jeopardize the legitimacy of my research. This next disaster came in the form of friendship. Allied destroyer joining squadron deploying Helldiver to combat zone. Base shift community member Riku Beans dropped in to lend a hand in what he thought was me running a seemingly lonely solo mission. He was mistaken, but I didn't have it in my heart to tell him to go away and decided to continue my mission, letting him know I wanted to have some opportunities to solo enemies to conduct further research. With our agreement in place, we got to work and... As expected, it was an absolute disaster. It wasn't pretty. My ego, once again, battered, bruised. I came to the conclusion that perhaps weapon stress testing really wasn't for me. A flawed process, an incomplete data set. Days and days after the initial patch was even released, what was the point? Dejected and frustrated, I almost deleted the recording until I began to see the funny side of it, which is why I thought I'd share this experience with you. Big respect goes out to all you Helldivers who dedicate yourself to stress testing weapons in the name of Super Earth. It's no easy feat. And whilst my data for the Terminids is nowhere near complete, I can tell you throughout my severe beating, I still learned a thing or two about the crossbow and how it performs. To be honest, you're much better staying away from this weapon against Terminids. Their up close and personal nature doesn't really go well with the explosive nature of the weapon. And as you saw, I had many issues with this throughout the previous run. Warriors are easily one-shotted by this weapon along with scavengers and much like the automatons, if you're rushed by a group that comprises of many of these, you'll make short work of them with some well-placed shots, folks. AOE is once again your friend here. The same goes for hunters. They can be taken down with one well-placed shot, but I have seen in some instances it taking two. Brute commanders and hive guards with their tough carapace armor prove much more difficult, and this is where things start to go upside down for this weapon. Unless you are body shotting them, you're gonna have a fair bit of time spent thwacking bolts into their head. Four shots to the ground underneath hive guards seems to do the trick, and three can kill a brood commander if you avoid their front armor. Chargers. Now, chargers die in approximately four shots to their rear weak spot, and I was unable to test the leg armor stripping technique in the video, but later on I found that one or two well-placed shots with the crossbow appears to be the way to go here. The armor isn't penetratable at all with this weapon, so make sure you avoid this approach. Nursing and bile spewers can be taken down in three shots if you are lucky. It's usually four in most instances, and as you saw in the video, Make sure you allow adequate distance between yourself and nursing spewers when they're rushing you. Shriekers are slightly less annoying in comparison to gunships because of how close they get to you. If you land a shot, they get one-shotted. Unfortunately, we can't do any damage to their nests with the crossbow. And this is the same case for bug holes. Absolutely bonkers. 
I'd like to see them improve no. this in the future. No, it don't. doesn't make sense to me. And the same goes for fabricators against automatons. A bit of a new style of video today. I'm trying different things out at the moment. And as always, I really value your feedback, whether you are a regular here or not. What did you enjoy about the video? Do you have any story-driven aspects of Helldivers 2 that you'd like to see? Sound off in the comments below. Take care of yourselves, keep having fun, and I'll see you in the next one.